Greetings, viewers and learners. Well, uh, my name is Chamo Yantan from School of Social Sciences. I take this opportunity to welcome each and every one of you to Indragani National Open University. Well, in continuation of the previous uh, discussion, today's uh, discussion is uh, titled as Festivals in Nagaland, Hornbill Festival. This is going to be the part three. Well, uh, I have already discussed, uh, this is the third part. And in the first part, I have discussed some of the, you know, the festivals in Nagaland and the second part also in continuation of that. And today, the main focus is going to be on uh, Hornbill Festival. This is going to be a very interesting, uh, well, uh, interesting uh, festival where you can also learn many things about the Naga society. So, but before we go further, I think it is very important for us to, uh, you know, to recap, you know, some reflections on what has been already covered in the previous lecture so that like we can have a continuation of today's lecture. So let us try to have a reflections of what we have been, what we have discussed already. We have discussed about Nagas who are well known for their rich, colorful traditions, bravery, honesty, and their love for music. We have also discussed about the state of Nagaland, which is inhabited by 16 tribes. We have also learned about the customs and traditions of the different tribes in Nagaland. And we have also discussed about the diversity, you know, when it comes to the functioning of the society, like the Aos, the Lotas, Angamis, they have a democratic kind of a system of governance. Whereas like tribe like Konya, Sumi, Chang, you know, they are, have they have a monarchy system and well uh, we have also discussed about the naga villages you know tribes which are politically were politically and economically independent of each other and history also you know tells us about uh, the right you know from the time in memorial the nagas irrespective of the tribes were living independently of their own uh, in their own villages and, you know, they identify themselves with their village and holds great pride to belong to a particular village. And we have also discussed about some of the, uh, the you know, festivals in Nagaland. Well, we have already discussed about why Nagaland is popularly known as a land of festival. It is also because like since, you know, the entire year, I mean to say every month, there is one other, another festivals in the state that is the reason why Nagaland is popularly known as festival, I mean, land of uh, festivals. And well, we have also understood the diverse tribes uh, in Nagaland and their festivals. We have learned about Tuku among festival, you know, as a time of thanksgiving, sharing, forgiving, strengthening relationships and bonding with the spirit of the dead uh, people or the soul. We have also learned about the Mwatsa festival as a, as a time you know, of relaxation, merrymaking and prayer for blessings. And we have also learned about a Duluni festival as a time of merrymaking, uh, resting and offering prayers to Almighty for you know, good abundant harvest. And then we also learn about a Mui festival which is celebrated by the Kemingan tribe which is basically meant for strengthening relationship. So, well, today, uh, as I have mentioned, we are going to discuss about the Hornbill Festival. And the learning objectives of today's discussions are, well, one is understand what Hornbill Festival is. And secondly, why Hornbill Festival? And the third learning objective is understand the different activities that, are, that showcases uh, during the Hornbill Festival, then uh, the other you know, learning objective is to have a better understanding on the Naga Morong. Morong actually means uh, dormitory, you know, it's a, it's a traditional Naga institution. Well, Hornbill Festival, well, it is popularly known as Festival of the Festivals. This even marks, you know, the coming together of 16 tribes you know, 16 tribes, uh, you know, uh, together. And during this uh, festival, the Hornbill Festival, it showcases and celebrates uh, each culture in, you know, more, uh, in each, each 
Naga tribe's uh, culture. And it is known as festival of the festival because uh, as I have said, like uh, Nagaland is, uh, is like, is, you know, it, uh, the Nagas, you know, comprises of the Nagaland Nagas, I mean to say, comprises of 16 tribes. And each tribe are having different festivals. So since it is very difficult for many people to go and visit every month in Nagaland to see or witness the festivals of the different tribes, the government of Nagaland have set up you know, this Hornbill Festival with an idea to, you know, bring all the Naga tribes together and show guests their cultures that includes uh, the, the festivals, you know, yes. So that is the reason why Hornbill Festival is known as Festival of the Festivals. And it may be also remembered that Hornbill Festival is a tourism, you know, promotional event created to showcase Nagaland as an attractive destination and it is also not an indigenous or a traditional festival you know as it cannot be you know uh, elevated or be at, at bar with other uh, traditional tribal you know festivals in Nagaland because the emergence of uh, Hornbill festival is uh, it was never a part of uh, the, the different tribes you know there was never kind of a festivals that brings all the Nagas together. So this is a recent uh, development. I think it has been about maybe about uh, two decades now. Well, yes, anyway, we'll try to have a much better understanding on this. And the Hornbill Festival of Nagaland has earned the title of Festival of the Festivals, as I have already discussed. It is named after a bird, which is a symbol of respect and folklore among the Nagas. And uh, you know, if you are someone who finds it exciting to witness all the diverse cultures present across, uh, you know, the subcontinent, the Hornbill Festival is a very interesting uh, festival which uh, one should really, you know, uh, one should really give a try. And, you know, in the PowerPoint, you can see the picture. This is a Hornbill bird. This is called the Hornbill bird. It's a very, uh, it has a very royal kind of a bird. And the Nagas, they really admire this bird. And if you uh, listen to many of the Nagas uh, folk, uh, folk tales, each tribe, you know, has a reference of the hornbill in their folk tales. This shows how much they value this bird. They have kind of a, a lot of respect, a lot of admiration for this respect. Of course, their respect is not only because of the kind of a royal looks that it gives, but there are also certain characters that the hornbill uh, in, exhibits, you know, in their behavior. And well, uh, why the name hornbill? Well, hornbill is, uh, as I have said, is a revered uh, bird that is uh, featured widely, widely in the songs of Naga tribes. And the hornbill feathers also, you know, uh, the fe features in most Naga tribal traditional gears, head gears, and is indicative of a commonness among the Nagas. As we go further, you will come across uh, many of the Naga traditional, you know, head gears. They will have the feathers of their hornbill. Yeah, they will have, they really, you know, uh, it's beautiful, you know. In fact, it's a very sophisticated, uh, quite royal, this bird is quite royal and many Nagas have a lot of admiration for this bird. So most of the Nagas, they have the hornbill feathers in their head cares. As you can see uh, in these pictures, almost all the, you know, uh, the people in the pictures dressed up in the traditional cares, they all have a hornbill feathers on their, in their head care. Yeah, and well, it was felt that you know, naming a festival after a bird, which was, uh, you know, you know, which is which was also already getting extinction, would create you know an awareness among the people for conserving the diminishing wildlife. So uh, there are. Uh, it is also the name hornbill was given not only because it is very well reverent or it is very much admired by the nagas, but it is also because. This bird, which is supposed to be the, the state bird, 
And well, uh, why Hornbill festivals again? Uh, the aim of the festivals is uh, to revive and protect the rich cultural heritage of Nagaland. And all the tribes of Nagaland take part uh, in their festival and display its you know, extravaganza and traditions. And the Hornbill Festival exhibits in a colorful mixture of dances, performances, graphs, indigenous games and sports, cuisines, you know, food flares and religious ceremonies. And the festival, you know, both exposes the culture and uh, tra tra tradition of the, the Naga tribes. So uh, this is the explanation why Hornbill Festival. Let's go a little forward. And how the Hornbill Festival promotes tourism? That's another a very important you know, aspect to look at it. And the Hornbill Festival has contributed significantly uh, to enhancing the state's uh, tourism brand. And many tourism promoters you know, believe that Hornbill Festivals in Nagaland is allowing tourists to have an insight into the different tribes of Nagaland and it fosters understanding of rich cultural heritage of the state, yes, resourceful uh, architecture and its ethnic uh, cuisine. Well, because like, uh, as I have said, like, uh, there are 16 tribes in Nagaland and all the 16 tribes are having different customs and traditions, in fact, very diverse. There are also commonness among the, a lot of commonness among the Naga tribes. But at the same time, there are also a lot of uh, differences, diversity, you know, in their customs and traditions among the Nagaland tribes. So this Hornbill Festival gives the Nagas, you know, a common blood from where they can come and showcase their culture at the same time where they can also come to learn about the other, the traditions and customs of the other tribes. And moreover, this platform becomes a very important for the state of Nagaland for attracting tourism, of course, like uh, Nagaland, of course, compared to the other state, it is not a very, uh, it is not a very big state. But then in terms of connectivity, road connectivity, transport, and also kind of accommodation, uh, they are lacking in this area, like transportations, uh, in a way, like even hotel industry has not come up much. So it is important, you know, people who are interested to know much deeper about the Naga society, you know, it is a good opportunity for them. Instead of visiting all the districts and, you know, uh, attending or witnessing the different festivals of the other tribes, this particular Hornbill festivals gives them the opportunity to come and witness and learn about the different, you know, uh, traditions, customs and traditions of the Nagas. Yes, and well, uh, activities in Hornbill Festival, of course there are so many things, but I am just, I listed down only some of the main parts. Well, exhibition of the Naga Morong, you know, we will have a short discussion on that Morong and then showcasing the different tribal songs and dances and costumes. And then we have uh, Naga folk music and Naga indigenous shave competition and Naga arts and sports. So these are some of the main activities uh, that take place during the Hornbill Festival in Nagaland, which happens every year from 1st December to 10th of December. It is like, a, this festival is showcased in a very colorful, in a very extravagant uh, style. And well, we discuss about the Morong. Uh, this is just one of the Morongs. Uh, it is, uh, well, we will discuss about more about the Morong. Uh, if you go to the Hornbill Festival, the government of Nagaland has dedicated a particular place called Kizama, where Hornbill, all the you know uh, festivals, the exhibition of the Hornbill is uh, is held or is conducted in that particular uh, village called Kisama Village. And in this particular Kisama Village, each tribe is given a place where they can uh, build their own uh, traditional house, especially the Morong. So every tribe is uh, having their own uh, traditional, you know. Uh, Morong building is built, and that is where uh, people can all people are also entertained 
to go inside, look around, and of course, even some restaurants are also being uh, is uh, is being run in that uh, morong. The Naga morong is one of the major highlights of the festival, and morong the morong is a self-governing body that aims to protect the village men. Of course, there are also women morong, and morong is bas it's basically an institution. It is an institution, but it plays. Uh, some other main role in the Naga uh, society, we can have a better understanding on that. And the Naga Morong is one of the major, as I have said, one of the major highlights of the thing. And the Morong were the community spaces in Nagaland where the young boys were trained. Trained means like where they are taught how to develop good manners, how to develop uh, you know, a war, how to develop, uh, you know, to be a successful warrior. And they, in this morong, they also learn about uh, many things like how to make, uh, for example, like uh, baskets or how to, you know, design uh, the naga dao, the spears and anything, everything that a man is required, you know, to live a normal life it is being taught here and most importantly in this morong uh, it is basically basically uh, it is a it is a place where only the bachelors the unmarried boys they live in this morong and it is where they learn about uh, as i have said many things that are required in society about maybe good manners how to be a successful warrior you know how to fight how to protect oneself and also uh, they learn about their society they learn about their migration their folk tales and folk stories are also being uh, taught here and including their folk songs uh, not only the folk tales, but also the folk songs are also being taught here. So the Morong plays a very important role in the Naga society. And another main role is that this is the place where the villagers uh, will protect uh, people from enemies, especially during the headhunting days. And the Morong culture is, uh, as I have said, is one of where you know bachelors are sent to acquire life skills by each tribe. And at the Hornbill Festival, the culture of the, Hor the, the Morong tribe is exhibited and the arts, paintings, lifestyles are displayed and tourists stays at Morong Cottage uh, during the festival, you know, to have uh, better learning about uh, the tribes. And the Morong were usually located near the village gate an alarm lock drum was placed where, which was used as a warning to the villagers in times of raid and attacks from the enemies. So as I have said, it is not only an institution where the, the boys, uh, the unmarried, the bachelor's boys, uh, they, they learn about uh, the different aspects of uh, the Naga society. And the beating of a lock drum was also used during celebration uh, celebrations and festivals. There's a lock drum, of course. I do not have, uh, okay, lock drum is a drum that is made of drums. It's a metal wood. It's a huge wood is being curved and then they make uh, in a hole inside. And so once when they beat the drums, it creates a sound which can be heard from some kilometers away. And during, uh, during uh, the head ending days, when enemies come to attack, uh, the people, you know, the people in the Morong, they will beat the drum so that the entire village will be alarmed to let them know that enemies are coming to attack the village. And so it is also being used uh, not only as a warning, but also it is also being used during celebration. And well, the Morong is known as the cultural and educational centers of a Naga life. And the youngsters, both men and women, were uh, thought about uh, Naga culture and welfare. And they grew up learning not only how to cook and clean, but also learn the dignity of labors and the life uh, sustenance uh, methods. And they learn how to, you know, brew uh, their own rice beer, which, is a, which used to be a very important uh, main food in the Naga society, the rice beer, which is made of rice, I'm sure.
many people are aware about this. And the folk songs and the dances, you know, becoming a hotbed of Naga's cultures and traditions. And the knowledge of uh, seamlessly passed from, you know, one generation to another. So it is in this particular moron where the knowledge of the society is passed on from one generation to another generation. So the moron played a very, very important very significant role in the Naga society. Unfortunately, now today, uh, the morongs are not there. Of course, now morong is replaced by the modern institutions like schools and colleges. So now when you visit a village, you will, of course, most villages will have, uh, you know, a, a morong, a building that is built in, the, in their uh, traditional morong style, just to kind of a reminder of their you know, their ancestors and the Naga music, you know, during this Hornbill Festival, like a huge, you know, like entertainment through the music is being, is one of the main part of the festival. And the Hornbill Festival is uh, like a giant fair with a large, you know, stage around uh, an ambly ambly uh, theater. Uh, which comes alive with music and dance performing performance at night. In fact, I think uh, there are also many important, uh, uh, important, uh, well, parts of the hornbill. But I think youngsters are very well attracted towards this music festival. The musicians, the music lovers across the globe, they you know they do not fail to attend this festival. And most importantly, till 2018 was. Uh, known to be the largest, uh, you know, uh, rock festivals, you know, in, uh, it used to be, you know, the, during Hornbill Festival, there used to be a rock concert competition, uh, which used to be the largest, uh, one of the largest in Asia. Forget about India, but it used to be the largest, uh, like, rock concert competition across India with, with a winning team, like, taking home a huge cash, cash prize award of 10 lakhs. Yeah, so it used to be a very, uh, this used to be uh, another very important component, especially for the youngsters. During this Hornbill Festival, this international Hornbill Festival, a rock concert attracts uh, music lovers from across the globe and they come and attend this. And it used to be held in a very, uh, very highly entertaining uh, way. And uh, you can see a picture there. These are the Tetsu sisters, which are popularly known as the Naga Global Cultural Ambassadors. They are also, uh, well, not only Naga, but also like uh, India's uh, cultural ambassador, popularly known as. And this, uh, as I have said, they are popularly known as that. These are the Tetsu sisters. Uh, they stands out among many bands, not only in Nagaland, but also across India because of the originality they maintain and the dynamism they, you know, they bring into uh, the Naga music. They do a lot of blending, not only with the Naga music, but also with maybe Hindi, with also Korean, with English, and so and so forth. So this is a band, uh, the Tetsu Sisters. Yeah, and showcasing different tribes. Uh, Hornbill Festival, each tribe, you know, its own uh, entirely costumes and tradition get to display their identities to the world. This is uh, in the main stage of the hornbill, and the Sumi Nagas are displaying their uh, their you know uh, Naga wardens, and then we have the Chang Naga displays uh, their you know their f folk song. Is sorry, it's written folk dance. It's folk dance, and you can see the way they are colorfully dressed and so detailing. And if you see in life, again, it's much more attractive. Let's go a little faster. And then the Angami tribe, it is uh, during the Sekrini, you know, festival. The young uh, people of the village sit together and s sing traditional songs throughout the day. And jugs of rice beer and plates of meat are placed uh, before the participants. As you can see, the young, beautiful, uh, uh, women dressed in traditional craze, serving rice beer, and you can see the young boys and girls uh, very well seated in a very disciplined and in a colorfully dressed. Uh, this happens during the Hornbill Festival as well. 
uh, mostly it is uh, during Sekrini, but also they are, it is also being displayed during Hornbill Festival. And the Lotanaga, this is called the Lotanaga, displaying their war dance. It's another very colorful tribe and which you can see during Hornbill festivals. Let me just uh, recap of what has been taught today. Well, today we have discussed about Hornbill festival as the festivals of the festivals. And I have also discussed why it is known as festival of the festivals. And we have also discussed about Nagaland state project to showcase the rich cultures of the different tribes under one platform, and that is called the Hornbill festival. And we have also understood the Naga traditional institution, that is the Morong, which is a place where the young boys and girls live together. And that is where they learn about the art of living, you know, different aspects of uh, living a successful life in society is being taught. And it is also a place where they learn about uh, the warfare. It is also a place where they learn about how to protect the uh, the village yeah, from enemies. And we have also understood the rich musical talents in the state. So this is just a reflection of what has been taught today. So with this we come to the end of our today's discussion. Uh, that is the festivals uh, of Nagaland, the Hornbill Festival, the Partry. Thank you very much.